Hey, this is T with T Quilt, and I'm here to do a video today on the different sewing machines that I have. When I'm doing lectures or workshops, I'm always getting asked, what machines do I have? And in all honesty, I believe that you can do anything on any machine that you have, but since I have a number of machines, I do have a particular machine set up that I like to do straight stitching on. I like another one maybe for free motion quilting. I might like another one for feed dogs up, uh, line stitching. So um, I will not be doing any sewing tests on these machines, but I will tell you, uh, show you the machines that I have, and then I'll tell you what it is that I like on those particular machines. So the first machine that I have here is my Singer Quantrum CXL and this was um, my second machine that I owned I owned a Kenmore machine before that I gave to my daughter and she's currently sewing on that machine so that one's not in my house but this one was my second machine and it does have some embroidery designs that are included also alphabets and then these are some of the decorative stitching here. And then if I pull, push this lever over, then they change and give some additional embroidery stitches. So I'll switch that back just so you can see. Okay. And then you can also like repeat the designs. You can repeat in a straight position, up or down, things like that. Has a a computerized screen there that shows the design shows your stitch length and things like that up at the top you have manual push buttons for four left needle positions all the way through to the four right needle position and then it also controls your width of your zigzag when zigzag selection is made and so you have your basic straight stitch zigzag and step zigzag and then your hemming stitch and then the various different buttonholes um, has a lever to cut the threads and then you can adjust the speed of the machine up or down and then reverse stitching and this is for sewing automatically without a, a presser foot you just put the power cord in on the side it has two different slots one for a power cord here and then the uh, remaining electrical foot that you can uh, then have the choice of sewing with or without a presser foot and then it has the light power on and off button and then another button works the actual light on the sewing machine so this machine one drawback for me is that it does have pretty dirty so it does have a um, casing bobbin casing that's below so I can't see above whenever it's um, empty so that's always a problem but it does have on the screen when the bobbin is getting low so it does have the indicator over here on the screen but it's all the way over there and I may not see that all the time um, this machine I actually uh, like using for piecing and the problem with this machine now is that it's one of the sewing machines that I have knocked out of whack because I made a denim quilt on this machine and going through the different thicknesses it made some horrible noise and I've taken it into the shop two or three times now and I have not been able to get it sewing correct I can do basic uh, two pieces of 100% cotton fabric they can do up to four pieces of fabric like crossing a seam but any more than that like if I'm meeting a whole lot of half square triangles in the center it will just do skip stitches and so the fabric isn't actually being sewn together so this is the again the Singer Quantrum CXL and I'm going to go to the next machine the next machine that I have is Another Singer is the Singer Quantrum XL1000 and it is an embroidery machine as well. It has an embroidery unit that goes on it. Um, what I like most about this machine is that I use it for machine quilting. 
I like the decorative stitches that I have on it so when my feed dogs are up I like to use that as well as the free motion quilting I feel like I get the best um, stitch play on this machine when I'm free motioning um, other things about this machine is that it does have the drop-in bobbin case it's an upgrade from the uh, Singer Quantum CXL so it was one of their first embroidery machines and I think I purchased this machine in 2001, I think. And so then here is where you um, tell it what type of speed you want. This is to cut the thread. This is to reverse. And then this is the button for just sewing without the power, just like on the other Singer sewing machine. It has a big screen here. The um, drawback here for machine embroidery is that it, it is... A black and white screen it is not a color screen so everything comes up in black and then again on the side you have your two cords it has a different sort of power for here this is the press of button this is the uh, actual power cord that I can run the machine and again it has the two buttons so you can decide if you want the lights on or off uh, as you're sewing and here is where the you have to use the singer software in order to get your designs onto the card and get it into the machine so this is kind of a little antiquated right now but I do have the Singer software that goes with it so it's not a problem I like using this machine when I have a particular type of embroidery designs um, like if something is a five inch square the Singer embroidery machine actually stitches closer to the frame so I actually can use less product on my stabilizer as well as my fabric and I find when I use the other machines I have to use a lot more product this machine also in my opinion sews faster than the other machines the drawback is just that it's hard to digitize to, uh, for this machine it's hard to use the embroidery software and Again, my machines are well used, so you're going to see some dirt on the machines. And here in the case, housing tells you, shows you all the different decorative stitching that you can do. And then it has a code so you know which screen each set of stitches are on. Okay. Now this is sewing machine number three and in my previous video I just did a whole review on this but I just wanted to make sure I include it in the video of all sewing machines that I have and I purchased this machine um, because I had knocked my two singers out of whack with sewing denims and thick um, fabrics like purse straps that have batting in the middle when you're sewing through eight layers of fabric those machines just were not um, heavy duty enough to sew those uh, particulars with. If you want to know more about this machine, you can look at the previous video. Also, I will be talking about how I made this cover for this machine. And I'm also going to make like a table mat. So I'll show you how I do some weaving in the next video. Okay, so I'm actually at my uh, actual sewing desk in my studio and the fourth machine that I have is the Baby Lock Elagio. So this is the Elagio by Baby Lock and I purchased this machine because I wanted an upgrade to my embroidery system. The Singer sewing feel, the largest size was 5x9 and so this one was 6x10 and at the time the six inch uh, units were what was very popular so that was one of the reasons why I went ahead and got this machine okay. and it is a color screen as you can see so that was also an improvement over the Singer system and I only do machine embroidery on this machine, so I've never actually sewn on it, so I don't know um, how that 
actual portion of it works so it's always set up as an embroidery machine and it used to be my main embroidery machine and then sometimes I would use my other singer that was in the embroidery unit the XL 1000 as a second unit like if a I was doing in the hoop projects I'd set one machine up to do part one and then the other machine would be doing part two like where you put the pieces together so I actually had my own little sweatshop in here going at some points especially around Christmas time and then along with this system I have like some various uh, thread spools that I can sit larger threads spools on to run and then I also have this rotating thread tree here that works with this machine so that's pretty cool so I like that the only thing negative about this machine is that it is truly antiquated because it uses your floppy disk so in order to get designs to, to this machine that are not already inside the machine I have to make sure that I have the technology to get my design files onto floppy disk and so I had to like purchase a box of a hundred when they first went out of um, went out of popularity so that I could make sure that I have floppy disk in the future and then if I get rid of the machine I can just forward that on to the next owner okay my fifth machine is the baby lock Elisimo and I really thought when I got the Elagio that that would be my last machine. So I'm saying again <laughs> that this is actually going to be the last computerized sewing machine that I purchased. It does take flash drive and it has a very large embroidery area. It can actually go up to 8 by 12 inches. And... What I do like is that I can park the embroidery unit over to the far side and then I have this whole entire area that I can do machine quilting with. It's not my favorite machine for machine, uh, my favorite sewing machine for machine quilting, but I do utilize it when I have to do the bed size quilt. So I like that feature of it again it has the color screen here and then up on top you have a thread rack that can hold up to 10 spools and then you can weave it through these modular units here if you so desire sometimes I do sometimes I don't I find it doesn't really matter a whole lot um, and then I have thread spool here and then I can also add another thread spool here that I can relax or not so uh, with this this was a additional purchase that I made it did not come with the machine it, the machine actually came with uh, a unit that would sit two large spools and that was it so I needed more because I do more advanced embroidery designs so um, there is really nothing um, this this machine has a whole lot more features than the other machines have but as far as sewing and what I do with it it's about the same it's just that I have a lot more features when I'm actually embroidering because it has a camera that it can if I wanted to put something on a shirt that already had a pattern or a texture then I could use my camera feature and it would show me exactly where the needle was and where the placement would be and I can stitch it exactly where I want. So that's sewing machine number five. The Baby Lock Elisimo. Here is sewing machine number six. It is not a featherweight, it's actually a Singer treadle machine. And I purchased this machine last September. I was in a rural part of Missouri and a lady had just had it serviced and had it, you know, cleaned as much as the service technician could clean it without resurfacing the machine. It does have a lot of the decals and are missing on here. But I have been wanting a old Singer machine for at least seven or eight years now. So when I came across this, I jumped on it. 
and it's actually my retirement gift so I have not actually sewn on this other than when I purchased it to make sure that it was in working order and then I also had the lady who uh, sold the machine to me she sewed on it so it has a very nice stitch okay here is my last and final sewing machine and I almost really didn't include this machine because I actually purchased this machine at a yard sale and it was ten dollars with the sewing machine case and that was really why I purchased it the machine itself is a uh, Nelco it's all metal but it's um, as you can see I'm rotating the hand wheel the flywheel and it will not do a thing so I just think that this is a lost cause and I uh, knew that when I purchased it and that's probably why it was ten dollars but I um, still need to have a technician look at this to see if it's something that they can fix or um, I may be getting rid of this but keeping the actual sewing table as I was showing the last two videos it was kind of dark in those rooms I'm sorry about that my main light decided to go out at that point but I wanted to go ahead and finish shooting the video hi I'm back because five days later I have acquired another sewing machine I went to visit my grandmother and I asked her if she wanted her sewing machine and she told me that I can have it and I'm here to show you what that machine is so this is the machine it's actually on the back side it says that it's a champion model and then on the front it says it's deluxe made in 19 52 and it was made in Japan it can't get the decal to show up very good that's about the best spot there and then here it has a seal with universal on it and it has some of the gold trim still have a little bit on the handle here the belt is dry rotted so I'm not able to turn the machine on this is the light for the machine and then you can see more decal in the back the decals aren't actually aren't very bad I don't know what this film is that's covering the machine I don't know if it was a seal that's now coming off because I have some up here I've actually wiped this part down with just a damp cloth. I don't know what I'm supposed to clean it with to get it off, but I'm hoping that I can see this a little clearer if I can get the film off. Um, this is the head of the machine. What I did find out is that these machines were made in Japan as clones of the singer. To my grandmother, and it did the sentimental value is worth way more than that for me so I'm going to see if I can call a few sewing machine repair guys and see if I can get it into a shop so that they can make a new belt and also let me get down here and pull the cord if I can get it up it's got the antique uh, cord for plugging in but when I look inside okay, you can see wires hanging in there that are kind of rusted so I don't want to plug this in until I get it serviced so I think this makes eight sewing machines now so uh, I just wanted to add this in so that it was all in one video and uh, I'll after I get this repaired I'll come back and I just wanted to show you the accessories that she had with the machine. I have absolutely no idea what some of these things are, but I do think that this is a ruffler foot. It 
so I have to do a lot of research I do know this is the walking foot guide but for some reason she has thread wrapped around it so for now I'm going to leave that another foot here a little barrel in so I'm gonna think that that's like a hemming foot where you have a rolled hem and the pieces go into the slots very interesting the way the feet are made I have absolutely no idea what this is we have another little rolled edge foot here A lot of things that have the rolled under effect and I'm not quite sure what they are this I think is the zipper foot again I have no idea what you would use that for she has quite a few old bobbins I would like to get those cleaned and see if I can keep those because they're older than the other bobbins I'm, they're not vintage or anything and then I also have some black washer that I'm not sure what that is so I'll save that for the repair guy also have another foot Or another attachment and then I think this is your seam foot and I also found some kind of a fuse or battery she had some old jean needles and lucky me I found the pieces to a manual so that's part of the cover more of the cover and here is sections of the book I'm sure the entire books not here so I will try to savage what I can out of the book I'll scan it or take maybe I'll just take photos so it might be too delicate to actually flatten out but um, just a few buttons, not anything spectacular or anything like that, and a few pins. I saved uh, pieces to a very cheap Chatelaine, so that's one piece, and I haven't taken all the thread off of the other side of it yet, but that's another piece, so um, I might do something with that, but... Um, I'm very happy with the number of accessories that she still had available because my grandmother hasn't sewn in about maybe about 50, 50 years. She, ha I have never seen her sew so I'm, I was just surprised that she had this style of a machine in her house so I am just excited and I'm so glad that she decided to gift me with it. I don't think that there's any one machine that's better than any other machine overall because I feel like the basic requirements needed for quilting or built into any machine that you need you just need to know how to operate the features and how to work with it to get it to do exactly what it is that you want it to do so come back and visit me from on my next video I'll be talking about weaving uh, some denim. I'm actually still working on projects with the Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine to make sure that I'm getting a good value before my uh, warranty period runs out. So I uh, actually made the sewing machine cover behind me and I want to now make a little sewing pad 
that I can use to put under the machine to help pad it. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.